Hello, someone asked me if I could provide step-by-step -step instructions as to how to connect and use the uh, uh, X32 Commander utility to show what uh, I did on a, uh, a different uh, video. So this is what I'm going to do here today. First, I go to the website where my utilities are and I download the X32 Commander uh, utility, which is there. So this is just standard download save it to a file once it is saved you know get the file to where you want basically and unzip the file so that's what I'm doing here in this area I open the uh, utility and I just extract all the files that are in the utility uh, in the zip file So this window here shows actually the files which are contained uh, with the utility and that's what we are going to be using. To start the utility there are things that you need to know basically the uh, IP address of your X32 and the IP address of the uh, uh, device you want to control with X32 Commander. Running the utility um, is this file here and you will see that there is also um, a text document in uh, this utility which is called x32commander.txt uh, let's have a look quickly at this file just editing with notepad++ this file contains a set of orders that will be used to control the behavior of x32commander uh, we can see here that there are four commands that start with a O for OSC and two commands that start with an M for MIDI control. In this example we're not using at all the MIDI commands so they will just be ignored but we are going to be using these uh, four uh, OSC commands and basically what it says here it says you know I'm going to look for the fader movements on channel one, on channel one and what I want to do is send whatever fader movement on channel 1 to channel 5 for the destination system. Furthermore, I'll do some modification on the fader movements and in the case of channel 1, channel 5 actually, which is the destination of channel 1 movements, will do just the opposite of channel 1, which means that if I move this fader here, uh, fader 1, okay, what I'm expecting is that the channel 5 for the destination device will do just the opposite. So when I move up the fader, okay, the corresponding fader on the destination device, which happens to be on channel 5, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this guy, will do just the opposite. So what I'm expecting is when I move this fader here, this one will move just the opposite like this. And you can look at the other commands, you know, the next command is on, on channel 2 and the destination channel is channel 6. It's going to go in the same direction but twice as fast, you know, and so on. So let's look at the way the program actually runs. You can keep this file open, that's not a problem. X32 Commander runs just by clicking this. My device actually says you know are you sure you trust this file yes I do because that's a file I created myself my protection device is saying I'm testing this okay this is just an antivirus once it is done and that's happening only once okay when you download the, the, the file for the first time so basically I'm connecting here with the IP address of my x32 this device so I'm putting 192 uh, dot one dot sixty two and that happens to be my x thirty two I'm not using MIDI so I'm just ignoring this I can connect actually my x thirty two is recognized so it says running and I can connect to another uh, x thirty two or another OSC device or another whatever program you can write but in that case I'm going to be connecting to the same device. Okay, so I'm putting again 192, 168, 162, and I'm adding the OSC port, which is 10023. Um, 
that's specific for the X32 family. So I'm connecting this as well, and it says it is connected. So now what happens? Basically, this program is always listening to everything that happens on that device. And each time it gets a command that corresponds to the filters that have been set in the, uh, the, the text files, it will interpret those, make sure the modifications take place, and output the orders to the destination device, which happens to be the same device. So remember, if I move fader 1, I'm expecting fader 5 to move in the opposite direction. And you see that I haven't touched or moved anything on, on fader 1, so nothing happens. If I move it slightly, okay, and this is where the magic happens, I just, you know, moved it a little bit. And channel 5 went to the opposite, which is 1 minus this value, which happens to be 0. And 1 minus 0 gets 1, which means this. And you can see that it will follow in the opposite direction the movement of the fader okay let's put it midway I said this channel actually when it moved channel 2 channel 6 will move twice as fast as this one let's see what happens I'll start at let's say I'm going to move to uh, from 0 to minus 60 I'm expecting this actually to move faster and if I move to halfway position if this guy moves twice as fast it should be at the top here so let's go to mid position approximately okay I'm here at the maximum so this is exactly what happens if I go further what happens no it's not gonna go through there if I go further it will be capped at value 1 here so it won't go further than the maximum value so all this happens all along then I go under 0 0.5 and it goes to 0 you know twice as fast as this guy here and what I said in the uh, um, command file is that if I move this fader, okay, those two faders are going to be moving one in the opposite direction and the other one twice as fast, and that's exactly what happens. You can see that, you know, those two faders actually are following a single fader. So you can have one fader controlling multiple faders, okay, and you can do everything at once if you want, okay. I can have those three faders which are controlling everything and the movements are exactly what I'm uh, expecting them to be. Okay, this was a quick demonstration. Thank you for listening. See you soon.